So Tucker Carlson of Fox News decided to talk about the wildfires that are taking place along the West Coast and after pretending to care about the people who are currently suffering because of said wildfires, he then proceeded to scold anyone who dared to bring up climate change. Because why would you bring up climate change when talking about wildfires that are now becoming more common and more severe? I mean, what a partisan thing to do. Why would you politicize this issue by talking about climate change, which you have to discuss when talking about these types of occurrences. Nonetheless, I mean, what he says here is laughably stupid. It is tragedy on a massive scale. When something this terrible happens, decent people pause. They put their own interests aside for a moment. They consider how they can help. We've seen that kind of selflessness before in this country. This is, remember, the anniversary of 9-11. But there are others for whom altruism is an unknown concept. Self-interest is all they know. These people do not pause. They never do. They relentlessly press forward for any advantage under any circumstances. They see human suffering as a means to increase their personal power. These are the people who turn funerals into political rallies and feel no shame for doing it. As Americans burn to death, people like this swung into action immediately. They went on television with a partisan talking point. Climate change, they said, caused these fires. They didn't explain how exactly that happened. How did climate change do that? They didn't tell us, but they just kept saying it. In the hands of Democratic politicians, climate change is like systemic racism in the sky. You can't see it, but rest assured it's everywhere and it's deadly. And like systemic racism, it is your fault. The American middle class did it. They caused climate change. They ate too many hamburgers. They drove too many SUVs. They had too many children. A lot of them wear t-shirts to work and didn't finish college. And that causes climate change too. And worst of all, some of them may vote for Donald Trump in November. And if there's anything that absolutely definitively causes climate change, and literally over 100% of scientists agree with this established fact, it is voting for Donald Trump. You might as well start a tire fire in your yard. Hyperbolic much? I mean, if you vote for Donald Trump, you don't care about climate change. You're kind of screwing over younger generations who are going to have to deal with this. I mean, we're already dealing with this. So, you know, 20, 30 years down the line, it's going to be a lot worse. So if you're voting for Donald Trump, someone who's undoing what little progress we've made towards climate change mitigation, then yeah, you're a bad person. But the reason why he thinks it's bad for us to bring up climate change when talking about the wildfires is because... It's a partisan talking point, according to him, and he goes on to say, climate change is like systemic racism in the sky. You can't see it, but rest assured, it's everywhere, and it's deadly, and like systemic racism, it's your fault. The American middle class did it. They caused climate change. So, obviously, this is not just a stupid argument, but it's also a straw man. Climate change is caused by large multinational corporations, 100 of which account for 71% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. Nobody's saying that we're going to blame Bob and Sally for climate change. What we're saying is that we have to regulate the fossil fuel industry because if we don't, we will all die. The planet will become uninhabitable. To them, profits are more important than people. So if we don't get them under control, rein in their destruction of the planet for monetary gain, then it will lead to the destruction of our environment. It's not political to say that. It's a fact of reality. Now, I will say that the fires aren't exclusively the result of climate change. Like, it's really difficult to prove that any one event is specifically the result of climate change. But is it logical to deduce that climate change had a lot to do with this? Yeah, I think that if you don't bring up climate change when talking about these wildfires and how severe they are, then you're you're not being honest. You're not having a serious conversation about this. You're not actually trying to address the root causes because, yes, it may not be the main cause, but climate change does have a lot to do with these wildfires. And as the New York Times explains, the forests between Eugene and Portland haven't experienced fires this severe in decades, experts say. What's different this time is that exceptionally dry conditions combined with unusually strong and hot east winds have caused wildfires to spiral out of control, threatening neighborhoods 
neighborhoods that didn't seem vulnerable until now. We're seeing fires in places that we don't normally see fires, said Crystal A. Colden, a professor of fire science at the University of California. Normally, it's far too wet to burn. The fires in Oregon, which have led to the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people and are approaching the Portland suburbs, stand out from what has already been an extraordinary fire season in the West, where global warming, land use changes, and fire management practices have combined to create a hellish mix of smoldering forests, charred homes, and choking air. Fires are common in the East, which is normally dry, according to Philip Mote, a climate scientist at Oregon State University. In some areas of Eastern Oregon, the return period or length of time between major fires is as little as 20 years, he said. But the western slope of the Cascades, which catches most of the moisture that blows in from the Pacific Ocean, is normally wetter. Out here, the return period can be hundreds of years, he said. That protective moisture has faded, in large part because climate change has altered precipitation and temperature patterns. Tim Brown director of the Western Regional Climate Center at the Desert Research Institute in Reno, Nevada, said the extreme warmth had caused vegetation to become exceptionally dry and to burn more readily. Temperature, humidity, wind, and solar radiation combine to dry out brush and are the key elements for fire. We call it evaporative demand, he said. And in recent weeks, he added the West Cascades have been really dry from the evaporative demand. Those dry conditions were most likely exacerbated by climate change, according to Meg Krachik, a professor at Oregon State's College of Forestry, and they had the effect of teeing up the landscape for a wildfire, she said. The critical moment came Monday and Tuesday when a windstorm carried hot air from the high desert in the eastern part of Oregon over the mountains, rapidly spreading the fires in the more populated western part of the state, according to Josh Clark fire meteorologist at the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. The lesson of this week is that the state must now prepare for more of the same, said Dr. Mote, the Oregon State climate scientist who recalled that extreme warmth had also led to a record low snowpack in 2015. This situation of large fires and that low snow year, these are both things that I and my colleagues who have studied climate change in Oregon for 20 years have been saying would happen eventually, he said, and now they're happening. I'm sure that Tucker Carlson would be outraged when listening to all of these scientists talk about how climate change played a role in these wildfires. Why would they use these partisan talking points? Aren't you supposed to be scientists and not partisan hacks? It's almost like climate change isn't a partisan issue. And if you think climate change is a partisan issue, you're actually the partisan hack. Because climate change is not a political issue or it's not supposed to be. It's a human issue, right? We're supposed to try to figure out why these wildfires are happening specifically and address it, yes, but climate change is part of that discussion because these types of things will become more frequent. Uh, hurricanes will become more severe and common because of climate change. All of the things that we were warned about years ago, decades ago, are now coming to fruition. So to say, oh, well, it's preposterous to bring up climate change. Like, do you have to politicize everything? You look like a clown. You look like a clown. And isn't Tucker Carlson supposed to be a populist? Doesn't he know that it's popular to want to take on climate change? Maybe he didn't get the memo. Maybe he's too busy being a Republican Party propagandist to see straight. So, I mean, if you're going to uh, pretend to care about the people who are affected by these wildfires, save it. Because it's bullshit. The only reason why you're talking about this is because you want to engage in climate denialism. You don't like that people are bringing up the fact that climate change is actually playing a role. He also uh, went on to attack Joe Biden for citing climate change. No, Joe Biden is right about this. I don't believe that Joe Biden is actually going to take adequate action to address climate change in a meaningful way. But he's right to at least note how climate change played a role here. Again, it's not like these wildfires happen exclusively because of climate change, but to deny the existence or the role of climate change in these wildfires is irresponsible and idiotic. So Tucker Carlson, once again, is using his platform in a dangerous and irresponsible way. He's trying to get you to think that the people who are citing the likely role that climate change played in these wildfires, they're actually the bad guys. And the people who deny climate change, we're actually the good guys. We're the people who are just trying to, you know, lend some compassion to the people who are affected by this. We're not trying to politicize the situation for partisan gain. 
No, but you are. By denying climate change, you are taking an inherently partisan action. And the reason why you're doing that is at the behest of the Republican Party, which you do propaganda for. Because Fox News is advertisers. Donors to the Republican Party include the fossil fuel industry. So if we actually took action to mitigate climate change, that would hurt their bottom line. So that's why Tucker Carlson is going to tone police anyone who brings up climate change and tries to make it seem as if they're overly political and they're trying to weaponize this issue in some way. No, climate change is here. This is a reality. I have to deal with this. I can't go outside because the air quality in my area is currently deemed very hazardous. So we have to talk about climate change and not just talk about climate change, actually fucking do something about climate change. Otherwise, things like this are going to be more common. And not only that, they're going to get exponentially worse because we have, what, 10 years to act? Like, after seeing all of this, I think it was Sam Hernandez who made this point on Twitter that, like, it doesn't seem like we have 10 years to act when you see how bad the situation is. Like, it seems like we need to act yesterday in order to actually meaningfully address climate change. So, you know, this situation is frustrating. And when you have ghouls and propagandists like Tucker Carlson uh, trying to scold anyone who talks about climate change, it just makes matters worse. Shut the fuck up. We know you don't care. Save your sympathy because you don't mean it. You're just trying to uh, do propaganda at the behest of the Republican Party who will never take action on climate change. Finally, Mitch McConnell admitted that he believes in anthropogenic climate change, but he still doesn't have a plan to do anything. And he's only saying that now because he wants to get reelected. But we know he doesn't give a shit because Mitch McConnell is a thousand years old. So this is probably the worst that he's going to see of climate change before he croaks. So why would he take action? He's just going to do what his donors want him to do. So, you know, it's really disgusting when people like Tucker Carlson use their platform to promote climate change denialism under the guise of like trying to uh, scold anyone who weaponizes this and makes it into a political issue like fuck off. Wet, 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 wet,